this marks the uh, culmination of uh, the ceremony of Hajj which is the fifth uh, pillar of Islam and uh, it is obligatory on all the pilgrims to sacrifice an animal whereas the Muslims at large are also expected to sacrifice an animal if they can afford on this day it was the practice of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam <clears throat> so today a uh, lot of animals will be sacrificed and people spend their day in uh, celebration uh, in feasting meeting family and friends and uh, sometimes uh, more often than not many people get carried away and they even forget offering their obligatory prayers so I think that this is a day actually where we should uh, stop for a moment and reflect and think what is what are we celebrating today we are commemorating the sacrifice that Hazrat Ibrahim uh, offered when he laid his son down to slaughter him in to fulfill the command of Allah Ta'ala so what does it mean for us today and it should help us recalibrate our spirituality and try to get our focus back because we belong to a community <coughs> which says that we are the uh, role models of spirituality for the world that we have accepted the Imam of this age who was promised uh, to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he prophesied about his coming that he would come in latter days and he will um, restore spirituality and uh, reunite mankind with, with God and we have accepted it that we are going to color ourselves will uh, ac accept that spirituality and reflect it in ourselves to the world so they can see what godliness means so it's very important to think about it because we get carried away and we are very fortunate also to have the system of Khilafat the leadership that is divinely appointed that he helps us f remain focused on this particular uh, fundamental principle and fundamental objective of our life so I have uh, uh, taken one of the sermons of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Khamis Ayyadatala bin Yusil Aziz that he delivered a few years ago at the occasion of Eid al-Azha and I would like to discuss with you some of the points unfortunately I couldn't find the English translation of it so I would uh, have to paraphrase a few things so the first point Hazrat Mas Khalifatul Masih makes and he wants to us to focus on that is that what is so unusual about this sacrifice that was offered by Hazrat Ibrahim and his son in that day and age uh, human sacrifice was a practice and uh, it was offered and it was received so there is an old man four or five thousand years ago who sacrifices his son or lays him down to slaughter and Allah is so pleased with it that he has made it uh, a uh, enshrined in the archives of religion for posterity for thousands of years we remember his name and more than half the world recalls this event one in one shape or form so what was it so unique about it and for us to celebrate his great achievement is really doesn't make any sense unless we understand it Allah Ta'ala accepted Hazur says Allah Ta'ala accepted the sacrifice of these individuals and rewarded them he rewarded them in multiple forms he first accepted their uh, sacrifice and he uh, bestowed upon them the great honor of building the house for the worship of God the Khana Kaaba was identified by Allah Ta'ala for Hazrat Ibrahim and Ismail to rebuild for the worship of God that was there was the first reward they got for this sacrifice the second reward they got for that is that when they were raising the foundations of Hanakaba 
they offered a prayer that may Allah raise a great prophet in their uh, progeny and Allah Ta'ala accepted that prayer and raised the best of prophets Khatma Nabijin, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the children from among the progeny of these two great men Hazrat Ibrahim Al-Islam and Ismail al so that was the second reward that was conferred upon them the third reward conferred upon their sacrifice was that their names were incorporated into this salutation the durood that we send on the Holy Prophet Sallallahu so millions and billions of people whenever they recite the durood they are invoking the blessings of Allah Ta'ala on Hazrat Ibrahim and Ismail also so these are three great rewards that were conferred upon them in this world for us to see so what was it was it just the sacrifice of an animal that uh, enabled them or entitled them to have this uh, this tremendous reward Allah Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran in this verse that uh, Hazur recited also that it is not the flesh or the uh, blood of the animals that reaches Allah when you sacrifice so what reaches Allah Ta'ala Allah Ta'ala answers the same uh, this question by saying that it is taqwa Allah Ta'ala says that it is the taqwa which uh, reaches Allah Ta'ala not the act of sacrifice and Hazur said that the taqwa is required is essential physical shape sacrifice can take any but it becomes deserving of reward if it has taqwa because taqwa creates the spirit the real spirit of sacrifice and it also brings about the results from that sacrifice without taqwa sacrifice or any for that matter any virtuous deed has absolutely no value in fact apparently virtuous acts can incur the wrath of God if they are devoid of taqwa if they are done just to as a practice or as to show off or uh, just to display they become deserving of punishment from Allah Ta'ala and Hazur elaborated and illustrated this point by saying that that Allah Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that the main purpose of creation of man is to worship him so and Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the best form of uh, worship is Salat Namaz Salat is the best form of worship but the Holy Quran says lil musallim, that curse is upon Allah's curse is upon those uh, people who offer the Salat because they are doing it not with taqwa they are doing it out of practice or just as a uh, show to others that how righteous they are or they are doing a righteous deed so Hazur said that this is the point that we should remember that without taqwa neither the worships nor the sacrifices mean anything absolutely no value so what is taqwa and how we achieve it and in this verse that I recited Allah Ta'ala says the reward is for the Mohsinin Bashir al Mohsinin that those who are kind uh, who are uh, doing favor to Allah Ta'ala they are the ones who give great and glad tidings to them for a great reward so in order to be included in that group of people Mohsinin one day's sacrifice or one act of sacrifice one act of virtue is not gonna cut it it doesn't happen like that and he points out a very subtle point that is I think very profound that you may want to think about carefully and he says that in the Holy Quran Allah Ta'ala says that when Hazrat Ibrahim salam asked Hazrat Ismail that are you prepared to participate with me in this sacrifice that are you ready to be sacrificed Hazrat Ismail salam did not say yes I am ready to be sacrificed you can slaughter me he says Ya Abate 
if al matomar that you do whatever allah has commanded you to do this shows the spirituality also or the insight of her ismail as well because it implied that do whatever and for however long allah taala says you to do whatever you want to do with me so if if it is just to uh, slaughter my throat right now that is fine but if there is more that is required i am ready for it so if in this particular verse allah taala is saying that they were commanded to offer sacrifice one after the other there was a journey of sacrifices that they started and they continued through their whole life at every step and that is what made them their symbolic sacrifice deserving of that reward so this is hazur says taqwa that you undertake a series of sacrifices unending series of sacrifices for the sake of allah that you act upon all the commandments of allah taala and your main objective or your sole objective should be to get the pleasure of allah taala nothing else no reward no recognition is needed your ob objective and incentive should be the pleasure of god and the best example of that was of course the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about whom allah taala said in the holy quran that kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin that my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death everything is for the sake of allah every moment of my life is dedicated and devoted to only this uh, this objective and that is to win the pleasure of allah taala so he says what does it mean for us he says as far as the sacrifice of an animal is concerned it is not obligatory on all muslims there are prerequisites you know if you can afford it you can do it you can offer a goat or you can offer a, a share in a cow's sacrifice or whatever but as far as other commandments are concerned or to act upon taqwa and tread the path of taqwa is something which is obligatory on everyone every muslim regardless there is no exception being given here so whether he is poor or he is rich man or woman old or young they have to act upon all the commandments of allah taala with true spirit of devotion and dedication and sincerity and it is every day decision that we need to make every day when we wake up we need to make that decision and determination that we are going to do it so for instance he says namaz is obligatory on everyone it is obligatory on everyone to do virtuous deeds to learn the religion so that you can understand your religion yourself and you can also train and educate your children and you can also open up avenues of tabligh for preaching by showing to others in your practical example the beautiful teachings of islam that bring about a spiritual glow in you that should be visible to other people as well and this cannot be obtained by just sacrificing one animal one day an important obligation is also haquq al ibad that the rights of other people that there are certain things the certain certain virtuous deeds you do that is for yourself like you say the namaz it's for yourself if you do the roza it is for yourself it elevates your spirituality if you go to hajj it will elevate your spirituality but allah taala says that if you are doing this and you are not fulfilling the obligations that other humans have on you then your worship and your sacrifices again do not mean anything so hazur says actually that those who usurp the rights of other even if they pray if they give thousands of sacrifices and hundreds and thousands of salats allah taala says that he does not care even for more than even a penny for their deeds and their acts these are the rights that poor people have on you these are the rights that your brothers have on you 
This is the practice of forgiving each other's weaknesses and faults and transgressions. If you are doing all this for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, then your these acts, these moral acts, these uh, dealings with other people also become acts of worship in the sight of Allah. So, Hazrat Masih Maud says, he quotes, that, and I'm going to read this part in Urdu. Says, Kanun e Qudrat is very profound, so please pay attention those who can understand Urdu, and I'll try to translate it. He says, Kanun e Qudrat Qadim se aisa hi hai, ke ye sab kuch marfate kamla ke baad milta hai. Khauf aur muhabbat aur qadar dani ki jad marfate kamla hai. Pas jis ko marfate kamla di gai. بس جس کو معرفت کاملہ دی گئی اس کو خوف اور محبت بھی کامل دی گئی اور جس کو خوف اور محبت کامل دی گئی اس کو ہر ایک گناہ سے جو بے باقی سے پیدا ہوتا ہے نجات دی گئی very important to understand this کہ جس کو خوف اور محبت کامل دی گئی اس کو ہر ایک گناہ سے جو بے باقی سے پیدا ہوتا ہے نجات دی گئی that it has been the practice of Allah Ta'ala it is the law of nature from eternity that you get all this only if you develop a true cognition a true understanding because on true understanding of God and true cognition of God depends your sense of fear about him about his majesty about the love that you would have for him for his glory and his an appreciation and gratitude for him for all that he has done for you you cannot develop those sentiments until you develop a full cognition of God and if you develop this perfect fear of God and perfect love of God then you are salvaged you are protected forever you are delivered forever from every sin that originates in being defiant bebaki that defiant you really don't care what god can do or can punish you you have no fear of him and therefore you have the courage and the audacity to commit a, a sin to go against his will but if you understand him and you have perfect understanding of his attributes then you cannot dare think of doing anything that will offend Allah Ta'ala. And this is what Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wasalam says. And Hazur says, so try to understand, try to attain this cognition of God because it is with this that you will develop fear of Allah and you'll also develop the love of Allah because these are the things that will save you from the audacity and that will, there are many sins that man does even without realizing it without even understanding it but if you have this because at that time when you're committing a sin you know or you have in your heart this notion that God is not watching me, or God is not capable of, of hurting me or chastising me or punishing me that gives you that audacity that you turn away and do something basically in the face of God and Hazur says that we should try to uh, understand this point and this is the essential spirit of Islam also that you put your self your ego your soul with perfect obedience to God at the threshold of God this is the crux of Islam this is the soul or spirit of all the commandments that are given in Islam and to offer yourself for the sacrifice with a desire and a resignation for with the full understanding of perfect love of God that is only possible if you have perfect God 
for that and uh, perfect love for God and perfect love of God requires this cognition. So he says that that is what is meant by here where Allah Ta'ala says لَنْ يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُهُمُهَا وَلَا دِمَاوْهَا وَلَاكِنْ يَنَالُهُ تَقْوَى مِنْكُمْ That is your uh, the flesh or the blood of your sacrifices uh, cannot reach God, cannot reach me but only the sacrifice that reaches me is the one when you fear me and when you have taqwa for me. So Hazrat Hazur said that therefore it is our obligation to always try and strive hard to win the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala and to have perfect understanding of Him and that will bring us the actual or the true Eid for us and that will also enable us to understand uh, the pledge that we have made that we will sacrifice our life and our wealth and our time and our honor for the sake of Allah that is only understandable in this perspective if you do that he says every day is Eid Eid is not going to come once a year every day of your life will become Eid and he says I pray to Allah Ta'ala that we are able to sacrifice to celebrate this true Eid or a, uh, every day and we become deserving of rewards from Allah Ta'ala every day and these blessings of Allah Ta'ala should not end with us but should continue in our progeny for till the uh, doomsday and they all be uh, so fortunate to continue seeking the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. So this was the khutbah that Hazur gave and I think it is very profound that it makes us focus on the true spirit of this day, the true message of this day and when we are affirming this message we should analyze our own selves and look at our lives, uh, ponder over it for a few minutes and make a pledge that every day there dawns that we should, there are, these are sacrifices that we need to make every day whenever we are called for prayer and we are busy with something else or there are excuses that we cannot come to masjid or there is a jamaat program and we don't have time for that we don't have time to read the holy quran we don't have time to listen to huzur's khutbas we are not participating in uh, paying the chanda according to the prescribed rate we are uh, violating the rights we are not kind uh, and compassionate towards our spouses or our children or our family members and we are angry we are carrying grudges against each other and we try to humiliate everybody and try to belittle other people these are the uh, everyday challenges that we have we all have that and there is no end to it until we breathe our last these challenges are going to continue Allah Ta'ala has designed this world as such and therefore it demands a constant struggle, a constant vigilance from us. So I hope and pray that Allah Ta'ala will enable us uh, to live our lives accordingly and bring about a, a good change in us and make this change a lasting change. Uh, after this we are going to do the Khutbah Saniya and Dua and as usual uh, we should remember uh, in prayers and just not ourselves and our loved ones um, and when we remember ourselves and our loved ones we should not just remember uh, their physical needs we should also remember their spiritual needs that may Allah uh, make us righteous and pious people that are pleasing toward Allah and make our life easy in that path towards Him but we should also pray for our Khalifa Yudha uh, Ta'ala bin Aziz, that may Allah give him a long life and make his uh, efforts that he is so selflessly carrying out day in and day out for reformation of us to keeping us on the right track, alleviating, helping us uh, go through our trials and also guide people towards other uh, people, invite them to Islam and Ahmadiyyat. So may Allah reward his efforts with success. We should also remember all the uh, shohada, the, the people who have laid their lives for the sake of Allah Ta'ala and their relatives, also those who are in prison suffering for the sake of Islam and Ahmadiyyat. Um, we should also remember 
everybody who offers any sacrifice for the cause of Allah Ta'ala, uh, particularly the um, devotees, life devotees, uh, because they have, uh, they have uh, offered their whole life for, for this continuous struggle. Uh, we should also uh, pray for the success of Ahmadiyyat in the world and also for Islam, for Muslims to realize what a blessing the, the uh, Khilafat is, what a blessing Hazrat Masih Muhammad is and rest of the world also may heed the advice and reform before it is too late. May Allah be with all of us. Alhamdulillah, Nahmuduhu, Wanasainuhu, Wanastaghfiruhu, Wanomino Behi, Wanatavakalu Ale, Wanauzu Billah, Himin Shururi and Fusina, Wamin Sayatia Malina. من يهده الله فلا مزل له ومن يزلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر. So please join hands. Amin. Eid Mubarak uh, to all of you. So if you wait a couple of minutes, I want to um, talk about one important event that is coming up. We have been um, offered this opportunity uh, to host the Shura of Lajna in Maila, USA. Uh, we have not, uh, we are still working out with them to see how we are going to implement it or carry it out. But before we commit, I would like to ask your help. And I, it is very important because it's a very important event. Shura is a very important event in the structure of Jamaat anyway. It's after the Khilafat. Uh, and for Lajna, who will be traveling, guests are coming to our Jamaat to, to, uh, to hold it in this masjid, which is a great blessing. But it also puts a lot of responsibility on us so that we can carry it out in the proper way, in the befitting manner. So it requires your help, one person, two persons, one or two teams cannot do it. So I have requested, this is in October, it is going to be 25th, 26th and 27th, which is Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So guests probably will start arriving on Thursday and may not leave till Monday morning, depending on their flights and all that, because they are coming from all over the country. Um, so what uh, I have requested 
uh, General Secretary Sahib to make a list of all the members of the Jamaat and if you will be kind enough today before you leave to just look at that list and uh, first make sure that your name and your uh, telephone number is correct but also uh, make a commitment that you can give us one day or two days or three days or four days because there will be different kinds of tasks we're going to need help for and sign it up and uh, once we finalize the program our commitment is firm then we'll get back to you and we'll try to then get you involved more directly into it but today we want to see how much is the support if there's no groundswell of support then we're not going to take up this challenge we do not want to humiliate our Jamaat and we do not want to humiliate the uh, sanctity of this particular shura that is going to take place. So we'll have to decline and they may have to go somewhere else. We'll, so it will be a lost opportunity for us. So please take a few moments uh, to check that. Uh, and once you commit, I hope and pray uh, that Allah will enable you to take those days off or time off. And it's only a weekend, it's four or five days. It's not undoable. Uh, if you all put our uh, heads together and our hearts together. So this is my humble request to you. Jazakumullah and Eid Mubarak again. And after this uh, session, we're going to have a group picture and inshallah we'll then have uh, lunch and we'll come back to for Zohar Salat at, uh, it'll be at 1.15 but we should get back here by 1 o'clock to do the wuzu and everything. Excuse me, something? Yeah, I think Khudam and perhaps Ansar, they have some activities, so they will make their own announcement. So Khudam, I think, want to hold their election for the Shura delegates, and uh, Ansar want to have the election for the uh, national president, Sadr Majlis Ansarullah USA. So they will, uh, so make sure that you don't leave the masjid without talking to either Zaim Sahib or Qaid Sahib, because they will guide you where this uh, program is going to take. It shouldn't take long. But inshallah we could do that again. Eid Mubarak, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.